Good morning and welcome to part four of this Sato 200 Ti mystery engine. And as you can see, based on the results of my last timing or setting of the rear cylinder and it not being right still, the engine is disassembled. So just a quick recap. Part two, when I retimed the rear cylinder, all I took apart was the rear cylinder. I didn't do anything with the front. I was operating under a theory that the front was correct and it was only the rear that was incorrect. And after all of the things I've gone through and I just had a long conversation with Harvey again, sent him some more pictures and you can see the status of this engine. I still now do believe that potentially the front was correct and I mistimed the rear cylinder in that I think after finding some, Jeremy, a friend of mine, helped me find an RC Groups thread where two people had this engine and they were actually talking about how to time it. And I think the mistake I made when I went to retime this rear cylinder is when I rotated it from the time this was timed, I think I only rotated it 180 degrees and I should have rotated it 360 degrees. So anyway, that's what I believe is the issue here. So what I've got here is the crank case with crank connecting rods in here and everything is off as you can see. And I've got these two timing gears. Now, one thing I need to clear up because there's been a lot of speculation, a lot of people guessing about things because they don't have this engine and they haven't read the manuals and stuff about the timing shafts or these timing gears, whatever you want to call them, cam gears, whatever. They are two separate part numbers, period. One of them is for a Sato FA-182 engine and the other one has a part number that is Sato 200 Ti, so it's a specific gear for that engine. Now, when they're out like this, you have no idea which one is which. And I'm gonna show you these two timing gears up close as, up close and personal as I can here. And I may end up having to just hold them in my hands. But if you look at them like this, let's see if I can get this to focus. They look the same. You see timing dots, this is for the rear, this is for the front. You see timing dots on the bottom, the cam lobes, appear to be in the same orientation. So from looking at them this way, you'd say, yep, they're identical. However, they are not. Now this rear one, I'm just gonna tip up like this so that this timing dot is down. If you do that, you can clearly see that hole, which is where you insert the timing gear or the timing tool to time this engine. Now, if you continue to rotate this over, that timing dot, this timing dot on this side of the engine or this side of the gear is on the exact same side. So the thing with both of these is they both have a scribe line and they both have a dot. One side has one dot, the other side has a dot and a scribe line. Okay, we got that. This side looks the same, you got the dot. If I do the same thing here, Where's that timing hole? It's not there. If I rotate the gear this way, then you see the timing hole. And now if I rotate this over, that timing hole corresponds to the line, not the dot. So that is the difference here in these timing gears. So, and this one's for the front. So normally in a Sato single cylinder engine, which we're gonna just look at, let me zoom out here. We're just gonna look at this part. We're just assuming this is a single cylinder engine right now. On all Sato single cylinder engines, when you put the timing gear in, you use, if it's 100 or less, maybe even the 125s, you get to the bigger size engines and then they have the mushroomed out tappets so you can't use the tool. But this one has the straight tappet so you can use the tool. So I'm operating under the theory that you can, that Sato wanted this to be timed using the tool. You would put the timing shaft in here, and I've got this set at top dead center right now. I've got timing, I've marked here. That you would set this in here, and let me just try and, it's not gonna be perfect, we'll get the idea. 
I'm just going to set this in here such that that timing mark is what I'm engaging here. Now, in a single cylinder engine, you would use the dot because the single cylinder engines don't use a mark. So, if you look here, when I set this in here, you always set them at top dead center, and hopefully you can see that the cam lobes are completely down so that no push rod actuation is being done at this time. So this would indicate to me that this is the correct timing gear for this cylinder. So if I, because I was operating under the impression that, well, maybe they're swapped. But if I were to drop this one in here so that I have the timing hole up so that you can use it, and that also means that I'd be using the timing dot. Let me just kind of quickly drop this in here. It won't be perfect, but you'll get the idea. It's pretty close to perfect. You can see I've got the timing dot or the timing hole there, but I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. This rocker or this cam lobe is up, so that's going to be actuating one of the push rods in the in the valve. So clearly you can't time an engine like that. So that isn't right. So that is enough proof for me to know that this is clearly the one for the rear cylinder. Now if I were to say, well let's just say I don't want to use the timing tool and I want to use the mark. Then both of them are down. But I, am, I have, to, have to make certain assumptions, and I don't ever like operating on assumptions, but I have to make, operate on certain assumptions using this engine because of lack of information, but I've got new information from RC groups. And the, and the assumptions that I'm operating on here is that I will be using my timing tool, which just so happens to be this screwdriver that I've used for many years to time these things, Drop it in, it's always going to be, and, and it can only be dropped in one, obviously, the inner lobe, which on the front cylinder just so happens to be the exhaust. On the rear cylinder, since the engine, the head of the cylinder is reversed, it'll be the intake. Single cylinder engines, it's always the intake. So it's always going to be that same left-hand side. <clears throat> so I'm operating under the assumption that Sato, even though they don't state it and they don't tell you how to time this engine, that they want you to use the tool. So that, I'm going to be operating under that assumption, so we're going to be doing it that way. So here's the next thing, and this is the key thing where I think I made the mistake, is I didn't have this head off last time I did the timing. What I did was I rotated it so that I could stick the tool in there. I don't remember exactly what I did, but I don't think that I rotated this crankshaft enough to time it properly because every other Sato twin cylinder engine, whether it be an odd fire or whether it be the boxer style, every single one of them, when they tell you to set the timing, you set one cylinder first. And, and that's the other thing is that you only see lines on timing gears for Sato if they're in a twin cylinder engine. No single cylinder engine will ever have a, a line al also. It'll only have the dots. So they always say, you know, use the line on one side and the dot on the other. And I just watched my 130T timing uh, video and it basically, the instructions say rotate 180 degrees and then time the other cylinder. I don't, that is, I don't believe that that is correct for this engine. I think with this engine you have to rotate 360 degrees. So let's see, I'm going to put this in here one more time and maybe I can kind of show. that that was okay so that's the other thing that kind of deviates from the norm here is that well let me just let me just I'm at top dead center I got my line here I'm gonna put this 
gear in here, timing gear in here, as straight as possible with that hole aligned. And I'm gonna hold it at this angle and maybe zoom in a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do here, straighten that out so it's landing in there. And I'm gonna rotate this. I've got timing, more. I've got marks on here for top dead center and bottom dead center. I'm gonna just rotate to bottom dead center. So 180 degrees of rotation of the crankshaft only equates to 90 degrees of rotation for the camshaft. So that's 180 degrees. Here's 360 degrees. This is where it needs to be set for me to time this rear cylinder, I believe. So let's continue rotating. Both of our lobes here are flat. That's bottom dead center, and then now back to top dead center. So it takes two, and then we see our timing hole. So it takes two full revolutions before this timing hole comes back to the top. So let's go one and a half, two. So I think the mistake I made was I only went 180 degrees when I timed that rear time that rear cylinder. So now what I'm going to do is, after all that ex explanation and show and tell, what I want to do is zoom out. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble these cam gears into their housing, get everything ready to go back together, time the engine just as I said I was going to, using the same one that was in here, time it just as I said, and then put the cylinder heads on. I'm not gonna show all of that because it's gonna take time that you don't need to sit and watch all that. And I will come back to this once I have the heads on and theoretically kind of a pre preliminary valve lash setting done. And then we can kind of do the puff check and make sure that you know piston or valves aren't contacting piston heads because I think that was the mistake. And I can put up the little blurb from RC groups here, at least the text of it, maybe preserve the people's names or IDs, and just show that these two people were going back and forth and they both came to the same conclusion about rotating it 360 degrees and then timing that. So we're timing the front cylinder first, rotating 360 degrees, timing the rear cylinder. The front cylinder, we're not using the dot. We're using the timing line because that's what corresponds to the tool hole being up. The rear cylinder, when it gets dropped in and timed, we will be using the dot because if you look here, here's the dot. I rotate it this way, there's the hole. So line, dot. And that's how this engine is gonna be timed and hopefully that's all there was. So the speculation now, everybody likes to do a lot of speculation as to how this happened and that is fun. It is incredibly interesting to do that speculation, but in the bot, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. What matters is making this right. Now, I don't think even after I've had this thing open two times, I'm gonna be able to definitively say what happened because looking at this engine, it looks brand new. I cannot tell. I mean, maybe it was run one time and maybe the person on eBay that sold it to Keith was not even the first owner because I looked him up and I sent him a message which he has not responded to in that he sells a lot of RC engines. So maybe he wasn't even the first owner, maybe he was a second or third owner of this engine. Who, who really knows? We can't know for sure unless he answers my questions that I sent to him. And even then, it's like, it's from two years ago, he might not remember. But I mean, internally and in smelling, the condition smelling what this engine smells like, it smells like machine oil. It doesn't smell like there's ever been any combustion taking place in here. Now I know when I took the piston off of this rear cylinder, the piston pin had an oily residue that sure as hell smelled and felt like fuel residue oil. But when I took the front one off, I don't think I wiped this, I didn't get that feeling. So 
What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what that means. All I know is what I have in my hands, the facts that I've got, the fact that this looks brand new, the fact that it feels brand new, the fact that it smells like a factory indicates that it would be brand new. So there were other people speculating that, well, maybe somebody replaced the cylinders because the cylinders don't look the same. The front cylinder is cut out and the rear cylinder doesn't have those same cutouts. And it's like, you know what? I'm not even gonna go there because it doesn't really matter. These were limited production engines. Maybe Sato just started using, maybe this, this head here that is not cut out like that. Maybe that's just one a, a leftover they had. Some They were using up some parts. I don't know. It's fun to speculate about those things, but I mean, in the, like I said, you don't really know and it doesn't really matter. What matters is what I've got here and getting it to work properly. So any other speculation about what I should do or how I should do it is irrelevant because I'm the only one that's touching this thing. And I have to go by the information from people that have actually had this experience. And finally, I've got some of that information and that's what I'm gonna act upon. And by damn, I'm not gonna stop until I get this engine running properly. So that's part four and it's been long. Part five will be showing after I've got this put together more than likely because I'm not going to be able to finish this up today. I've got a lot of other things to do. But so thank you for watching this part four of this Sato 200 Ti mystery. And part five will probably be comprised of me showing you this on the bench. And if everything feels right to me, then I'll continue part five out on the stand and hopefully we'll get a run going.